Hawk the Herald Angels sing, huh? A little. John, was that your idea? Was, was that your idea? Seth's idea. Nice job, Seth. Nice to take initiative. Young people, take some initiative. Don't be average. Stand out. Um, I wasn't late. I was outside talking to my friend, Deputy Mobs, who I love, and I wanted to give him a hug. I haven't seen him for a while and tell him how much I appreciate what he does for us. Yes, sir. Um, Shavuot, huh? How many are celebrating Shavuot for the first time? How many have no idea what Shavuot is? <laughs> How many don't even know why they're here? <laughs> it's okay. That's all right. So, uh, yeah, that's Chag, not Shag. That's Chag. Say it. Chag. <laughs> not Hog. Not Hog. That's a pig. Chag. <laughs> ha- get, get, don't you know how to ha? Yeah, don't you know how to ha it? Chag, Sameach, not Samich. And Sameach means joy, happy. Just means happy. And Chag is holiday. Where we get, you know, we get holiday from the word holy day. That's all it is. So it's have a good holiday. The holidays were made for us. We weren't made for the holidays. So, you know, the the challenge, um, you know, I've been celebrating this holiday, oh, about 63 years now. You know, I was telling somebody yesterday, my, my whole family's Jewish, meaning there's not intermarriage. My sisters all married Jews. All their kids were raised Jewish in the synagogue. They were all, you know, bar mitzvahed. And um, even my sister, her second marriage, she married a non-Jew, but he converted and raised the kids Jewish. So in Judaism, the feasts are really all about joy. We have the greatest time. And then when I, when I saw the, the Messianic movement starting to proliferate, and I saw all the Gentiles coming in, they were always looking at their watch, like sundown, we got to celebrate Shabbat at 637. And man, you, you guys just snuffed the joy right out of it. And so I, I just, I'm, I'm just trying to help you enjoy it, because there's so much in life that stinks, right? There's so many unenjoyable things that we have to deal with. The last thing you want to do is celebrate a feast that God wants you to enjoy and turn it into laborious and legalism. Right? Before you start asking yourself, you know, what am I supposed to do and where am I supposed to do it and how am I supposed to do it, why don't you ask yourself why you're doing it? If you don't know why you're doing it, then don't move on. You know? And I just have to tell you on a side note, I was thinking about this this morning when I went for a a prayer ride. I took a bike ride this morning. By the way, it was magnificent. Sunday morning at 6.30, you know, nobody's up and uh, in Macon. So it's, it was just absolutely stunning out and the Holy Spirit was speaking. But a lot of the questions that sometimes you ask me, and I know you want to write in and ask, you have a thousand questions, right? And you wish you could just sit with me and ask me all the questions because you think I know everything, right? Because I'm Jewish and I believe in Yeshua, which isn't true at all. It's true that I'm Jewish and I believe in Yeshua, but Um, most of the questions you ask are are not important at all. Not not even close. Why do I say that? Because even if I gave you the answer, it's not going to change your walk one iota. Like, Rabbi, where was the upper room? Was it in Jerusalem? Was it it on the stairs? What's the difference? In other words, if I gave you the answer, and I, I have an answer, but if I gave you the answer... Will you become more obedient to God? Will you listen to the Holy Spirit more? Will you not be offended as easy as you are? Will you love your enemy more? Will you control your tongue more? So why ask those questions? Why not ask the Holy Spirit to help you to love more and to help you to control your tongue more and help you to you know, overlook other people's sin more and help you to be non-judgmental? Right? Wouldn't that be... I'm, look, I'm not trying to... I know, like, oh my God, you've already offended me. We didn't even... 
you didn't even start the service. <laughs> By the way, the service starts way before I get up here. Um, you know, God just doesn't show up when I get here. He's here all the time. Um, but it's important that I share these things with you because I don't want to have a traditional service where I come in and we know when we're going to start, we know when the music's going to come on, and we know when the music's going to end, and we know when the sermon's going to end, and we know what time we're going to leave the parking lot. That's, that's so incredibly religious and not God. By the same token, you can go the other direction and be like, well, the Holy Spirit told me to stand on my head. Really? You know, so, so you have to be careful. This is how I feel. You know, a lot of people are extreme today. I, I think when it's ultra-religious and controlled, it becomes a cemetery. And when you get wacky, it becomes a circus. I don't like cemeteries. I really don't, because it's just dead. Nobody there is alive. Their souls are gone. And I don't like circuses, because there's a lot of freaks and it smells like crap. And that's how I feel, I feel that way spiritually. People that are spiritually sp spooky or weird and they stink. And, and people that are ultra-religious, they're dead. And I don't want either one. I, I want the presence of the real deal presence of God. Full of spirit and full of truth. So... So just in case you're here for the first time and you've already decided you're never coming back, at least you know what I'm here for. <laughs> at least you know what you're not coming back to. Right? It's honest. Right? No, 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 no facade. No facade here. No. And you need to take yours off because God cannot heal you unless you get real with him. And I'm not just talking physical healing. I'm talking spiritual healing. Yeah. All right. So um, what do you say we read a psalm? Would that be okay? Anybody in a rush? Anybody got someplace to go? I'll keep. I'll try to. Any, anybody got any big plans after this? All right. Um, I just asked the Lord this morning if I could read a psalm that just talks about how great he is. And he said, sure. And um, this psalm is about as good as it gets. So if you got your Bibles with you. Um, Psalm 145. If you got your devices with you and you want to use them, use them and then immediately turn them off. Here it goes. I will praise you to the heights, my God, the King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. The psalmist, which is David in this one, he, was, he only wrote half of them. Even though people say the Psalms of David, half of them. But he's consumed. David is consumed. That what made David so great. Yeah, did he fall? Don't you? Did he fall short of God's glory? Don't you? But let me tell you, at the end of your life, if God says, this was a man or a woman after my heart, don't, don't <laughs> discount how unbelievably special he was. And he's consumed. He's consumed with God. He can't get enough. He's a God addict. He says seven times a day, he got down on his knees. Can you imagine seven times? Like he was on a regimen. Maybe it was five in the morning. Then he decided to do it at nine in the morning. Then it's twelve. Seven times a day, he got on his knees and raised his arms up to heaven and just sung God's praises. Wouldn't that be great? I mean, the Muslims do it three times a day. Be nice if the Christians did it once. Every day I will bless you. I will praise your name. That's his Shem, his reputation, forever and ever. Listen to the depths, how this pyramids. Great is Adonai and greatly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. Meaning, even if you get that incredible revelation, that moment or that day, or you get it today, or you get it tomorrow or next week, and you go, you haven't scratched the surface of his greatness. His greatness is beyond all searching out. Each generation will praise your works to the next, and this was written 3,000 years ago, and proclaim your mighty acts. 
the song about God's greatness will never die. Even if you don't sing it, somebody else will. And even if that person doesn't sing it, the four living creatures are always singing it. It will never stop. It will never stop. God's praise will never stop. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty. That was David's strong point. David's strong point wasn't reading the Torah. David's strong point was just meditating, getting lost in the Lord, and the Lord getting lost in him. I will meditate on your glorious splendor of your majesty. How majestic. And on the story of your wonders. People will speak of your awesome power, and I will tell of your great deeds. Don't, don't talk so much about what you're doing. Talk about how great God is. Well, Rabbi, I want to tell you a story. I hear him after service, or I stay for two. By the way, today I'm not staying. I've got 40 people to baptize. I'm out the door, okay? And again, please, you know, I stay every service, right? What do I stay for? An hour and a half, right? Until the place closes down. I don't have to. I'm not obligated to. It's not in my contract. But please, please know that there's so many people that just want to say hello and when you start telling me about theological stories and things that happen to you, it's not that I don't want to know, but it's not the right time. Because then there's this line of people, and you know there's that lady who's 80 years old who just wants to say, Rabbi, I love you, and I want to say to her, I love you too. And then she waits 20 minutes, and then she leaves, dejected. So just be, be cognizant of that. You know what I mean? It's not like, I got him. Mm. <laughs> just want to say hello. But today... Uh, so let me just say right now, hello and goodbye, because after service, I'm out. Uh, yeah, so just talk about how great God is. You know, I never, I've been in this town 20 years, I never talk about Beth Yeshua in this town, ever, to anybody. I talk about Yeshua in this town. If God wants them to find Beth Yeshua, they will. They will gush forth the fame of of your abounding goodness. That's what you should do. Gush forth the fame of God's abounding goodness. If, if, he, if he did something through you, isn't it really him doing it through you? Right? I mean, when all's said and done, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but don't you see yourself as the ventriloquist dummy? You should. What's that story about the ventriloquist? There was a ventriloquist doing an act and he said something that offended somebody. And the person got up and said, you have no right to speak like that. How dare you? You're very offensive. And the ventriloquist felt bad. And he said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I offended you. She goes, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to that little jerk on your knee. a holiday lighten up <laughs> some of you are so uptight oh my god you make me nervous when you get like that they will gush forth the fame of your abounding goodness and they will sing of your righteousness that's why i wore silver today silver represents righteousness and if it wasn't for the cross and if it wasn't for the death and resurrection of messiah i couldn't wear righteousness and neither could you your righteousness is not in what you do. Your righteousness is who you are in Him. Adonai is merciful and compassionate. Not like us. He's slow to anger and great in grace. Adonai is good to all. Not just you. To all. It rains on the just and the unjust. His compassion rests on all His creatures. Isn't that nice? Wouldn't it be nice if you could say, my compassion rests on all God's creatures? Yikes. All your creatures will thank you, Adonai, and your faithful servants will bless you. They will speak of the glory of your kingship, and they will tell about your might. 
to let everyone know of your mighty acts and the glorious majesty of your kingship. This was the king speaking, but he wasn't speaking about his kingship. Your kingship is an everlasting kingship. David knew his kingship was going to come to an end. Your reign continues throughout all generations. David knew his reign was going to come to an end. Adonai supports all who fall and lifts up all who are bent over. How many times have you fallen? And here you are. How many times have you been bent over and said, I'm not going to be able to straighten out this time? Too far gone this time. And here you are. The eyes of all are looking to you. You give them their food at the right time. Right? Um, we got tons of birds in our backyard, and I've never heard them knock on my door and ask for food. Maybe that's because our bird feeder is stocked, but I don't know. <laughs> but you, you understand what I'm saying. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Adonai is righteous in all his ways. Nothing he does is wrong. I said to a young lady who came up, I don't know how old she was, maybe she was about 14, but I could tell she's been knocked around. A lot of times when you come up, the Lord will just tell me something. I don't ask, I don't want to know. I'd rather not know. But then he'll just tell me something. Give me a word of knowledge. A lot. And so then I start to minister. And I told her, I said, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. I said, even your parents cannot give you total unconditional love all the time. I said, so you're looking for something that only exists in one entity, and that's God. And so it would behoove you to get as close to him as possible because he cannot hurt you. Does anybody agree? Yeah. Yes. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Adonai is righteous in all his ways, full of grace in all he does. Wow. Wow. Adonai is close to all who call on him. He's not on autopilot. If you don't want him, then he goes to the next door of the heart and knocks. He fulfills the desire of those who love him, fear him. Yeah. The fear of the Lord in America is becoming as extinct as the dodo bird. He hears their cry, those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. Adonai protects all who love him. But all the wicked, he destroys. Sadly enough, David had to let everyone know God is also great in his wrath. And this is how he ends. My mouth will proclaim the praise of Adonai. All people will bless his holy name forever and ever. I was up all night looking for a psalm and everything I read I thought and then God was like, and nope, nope. Nope. Then this morning still, nope. Took me till like eight, eight o'clock on the bike ride to get it. You know? Why does he do that to me sometimes? <laughs> like all the time, right? Always waits till the eleventh hour. You know, I can never get I can never get set. It's always like I mean, even I had to train some scriptures. Roxanne's on vacation, sadly enough. Regina's on a permanent vacation, and so I had nobody to help me. So I text Roxanne, and I said, I know you're on vacation. I don't mean to disturb you, but the Lord said, do it. So I said, look, I didn't tell her that because that's, that's spiritual manipulation, but he told me to do it. So I just said, is there any way? And she wrote back right away. She said, yeah, I have my computer. I can log in and change it. No big deal. And I said, okay, here's a couple of changes. So I was so happy. You know, God is good. Father, thank you so much. Thank you that when it comes right down to it, every day with you is a holiday. 
Being born again is like being on a permanent vacation, a permanent holiday. Glorious. I, uh, I can only imagine that you're going to show up today, Father, because you made the appointment. We didn't make it with you. You made it with us. And I know we skip out on appointments, and we cancel appointments all the time, but not you. Not you. So I'm looking forward to hanging out with you today, with the rest of the fam, and uh, looking forward to just blessing your name and uh, making you happy, because you sure do make me happy. We love you. Be blessed in Yeshua's name. Amen.